Hi there. In this project, we're going to talk about sampling signals. Signals in computers are generally just represented as lists of numbers or samples, and we have to do some special tricks on them to make them work in the real world. A good example of sampling is in audio files in digital form, such as compact disks and MP3 files. In our project, we'll use audio files in .wav format since that format's easily imported into the analog discovery waveform generator. So, as we talk about sampling and audio files, we'll also learn how to import these files into the waveform generator. In computers, signals are most often identified only as a series of what are called samples. Samples are the value of a signal at very specific points. So, when the AWG creates or receives a signal, usually all it has is a list of values. For this example, all that's known is a list of numbers corresponding to the values F1, F2, F3, so on and so forth. We don't even actually know what times each of the samples corresponds to. To try to assign times to each of these values, we assume that the points are evenly spaced in time. Then we just need a time difference, delta T, between points to figure out which time each signal value corresponds to. When the signal is presented to the terminals of the analog discovery, of course, the voltage has to be defined at every single time point. The analog discovery creates a signal by doing what is called holding the value between samples. This approach creates a stair-step-like representation of a signal like that shown here. In fact, when we use the AWG to create a signal, what we're doing is setting the sample values to correspond to one period of the signal shape we want. Sine wave, triangle wave, square wave, etc. Then when we set the frequency, what we're really defining is the time between samples. If we have a long time between samples, the signal has a low frequency and vice versa. In general, we don't explicitly set the time between samples. Instead, it's defined by what's called a sampling rate. The sampling rate's the number of samples that correspond to one second of data. The general idea is analogous to the difference between the period of a signal and its frequency. Because of the close correspondence between sampling rate and period, the units of sampling rate are taken to be hertz, abbreviated HZ. Hertz corresponds to samples per second in this context rather than cycles per second when we're talking about the frequency of a periodic signal. One application where the use of samples and sampling rate is particularly explicit is when we play wave format audio files using the analog discovery. Wave files are just a series of numbers with a sampling rate specified. Let's look at how this information is used in the analog discovery when playing back these files. Once again, we'll create audio signals that we want to listen to. Therefore, the circuit we'll use is the same one that we used in the second and third AWG projects. It's simply a speaker connected to channel one of the AWG. Also as before, I'll be using a set of speakers connected to the headphone jack on the analog discovery to play back our signals. To import and play back an audio file using the analog discovery, click on the player option under the basic tab on the WaveGen instrument. To import the signal, click on Add and then browse to the location where the WAV file is saved. I've saved some bird calls and whale calls here, so I'll open one of those now. This is the song of a garden warbler. Notice that after I import the file, some additional information appears here. We're given a total number of samples in the file, in this case 141.72 kilosamples, or 141,720 samples, and a sampling rate, 16 kilohertz. This sampling rate corresponds to the data rate when the signal was recorded. If we want to play it back so that it sounds right, we need to match the playback frequency to this sampling rate. So let's set this frequency to 16 kilohertz. I'll also set the amplitude to 2 volts. If we try to set this level too high, part of the signal might get clipped, the high values might be cut off, and it could sound funny. To play back the signal, just click on Run AWG1. To see the effect of the playback rate, we'll just change the sampling rate to, say, 10 kilohertz. The song gets played back more slowly than it was recorded. Likewise, if we change the sampling rate to 20 kilohertz, the song plays too fast. 